look at what we know from literature about junk food. You know, people know junk food is bad. You read literature and you find that they are bad for health. Uh, they don't have nutrition. They have empty calories, largely refined carbohydrates, very high on sugar, very high on salt, very high on fats, including trans fats. So these things we know from literature. But we should also know there is something called as non-communicable diseases. And according to World Health Organization, NCDs, non-communicable diseases, are the new global epidemic. It's, it's, it's increasing every year now. So in 2008, about 57 million people died. Out of that, two-thirds died because of non-communicable diseases. And if you look at the breakup of how people died due to non-communicable diseases, you find that about 40% died because of cardiovascular diseases, 27% because of cancer, 30% because of respiratory diseases, 4% because of diabetes. <coughs> but WHO also says that unhealthy diet is one of the key cause of the growing global burden of disease, especially non-communicable diseases. So changing diet, which is low in nutrition, high on salt, sugar, and fats, is directly related to these diseases. And this characteristic, low on nutrition, high on salt, sugar, and fat, is what junk food is all about. So junk food is directly related to non-communicable diseases. Uh, let's look at salt. You know, uh, WHO very strongly believes that and recommends that we must restrict our salt consumption because salt is directly related to hypertension and cardiovascular diseases. And the recommendation is not more than five grams per day. Our own National Institute of Nutrition Hyderabad says you can eat six grams because in India, we are a hot country and we lose salt from sweat. So we can eat six grams. We have a salt problem in this country because about 40% of population in this country eats above 10 grams per day. In fact, there are states where average salt consumption is as high as 30 grams. What the world is doing about salt? Um, there is a huge concern about salt. Britain has uh, a public health campaign on salt since 1994. They have a target to reduce salt, and in fact, now they find that if they reduce salt, it reduces blood pressure in the population, it reduces preventable death, it also reduces health, health cost. So there is a lot to learn from what the world is doing to reduce non-communicable diseases by controlling what we eat. Uh, fat, as I said, junk food is about salt, it's about fat. There's a clear link between saturated fat and trans fats uh, with heart diseases and also with diabetes. Uh, again, WHO estimate is that about 2.8 million people die each year because they're overweight or obese. And obesity is again directly linked to fat and sugar. More fat you eat, more sugar you eat, you're, you, you, you become fat and therefore, you know, you have overweight, obesity, cardio and all other NCDs then, then follow. What is WHO guidelines on fats? And in fats, trans fats are the worst. Uh, WHO guideline is you shouldn't have more than 1% of energy from trans fat, which in grams means you shouldn't have more than 2 to 2.5 grams of fat per day, from children to women to men. Uh, sugar, how much sugar WHO says we should eat? Uh, uh, the guideline is that every day we shouldn't be eating more than 20 to 25 grams of sugar. Why should India worry about it? You know, we are a country which is a very poor country, and why should be all these things that I have told you about is, is, is the disease of the rich. If you are rich, you eat all these things. We don't have food to eat. But the fact is, actually, India has double burden of disease. We are undernourished, but we are also overweight. This is... National Family Health Survey, which was done in 2004-05, the, the third National uh, Family Health Survey, which shows that about one third of women in urban India are actually obese or overweight. <coughs> and about one, one in five men are obese or overweight in urban India. Rural India is still under control, but that also is, is changing very, very fast, as a lot of other studies are showing. In totality, in country today, 
one in eight people are fat and therefore susceptible to non-communicable diseases. And we have data from 1998 which shows that obesity in women have increased by 4.2% from 1998-99 to 2004-05. So we are also becoming fatter and quite quickly. Look at our burden of disease. As I said, we have double burden of disease. Currently about 50% of people in this country die because of non-communicable diseases and 50% because of communicable diseases. According to Public Health Foundation of India, their report, by 2030, about two-thirds will die because of non-communicable diseases. So, we should be worried about non-communicable diseases, we should be worried about junk food, we should be worried about our junk diet. The other fact is that junk food industry, fast food industry is growing at about 35 to 40% annually. So they are really growing very fast. And most of them are controlled by big multinational and big domestic companies. So that's uh, uh, another thing that, that we should keep in mind. Considering all these things, looking at the health burden, CSC for the first time in India decided we will test what is there in these junk food. They write things on label, we wanted to know actually how healthy or unhealthy they are. What they claim on the label is true or false. So we tested for fat, as I said, non-communicable diseases is about sugar, salt, fat. We tested for fat, total fat and trans fats, salt and we tested for carbohydrate which includes salt, uh, sugar. What were the samples? Everything that we love to eat uh, is on the list, including four pot potato chips, from Lay's uh, to uh, Uncle Chip to Bingo. Uh, we took two samples of Lay's and we will tell you why we did. One which was manufactured in December, another which was manufactured in March 2012, and, uh, the first one in December 2011. Two Indian snacks, including uh, aloo bhujia of uh, Haldiram, and, uh, uh, one, uh, and, and, and one kurkure two instant noodles, Maggi and Top Ramen, two carbonated beverages, obviously Pepsi and Coke, six burgers out of which three non-veg and three veg, from McDonald's to KFC uh, to Lirulas, three pizzas uh, from top pizzas companies, pizza companies, three potato fries, again French fries from those companies and one fried chicken from KFC. So we had 23 samples, we looked at total fat, trans fat, sugar and salt. That's the study all about. Let's look at nutritional guideline. I have already told you what WHO specifies. The specification is very simple and very clear. We should not have more than five to six gram of salt, no more than 20 to 25 gram of added sugar, no more than 15 to 30% of our, our energy from fat, which is about 35 to 60 grams of total fat, not more than 2 to 2.5 grams of trans fat, not more than 230 to 350 grams of carbohydrate. That's the nutritional guide. Both WHO and NIN specifies it. And we have compared the food that we tested with this nutritional guide. Look at potato chips. What did we find? Uh, one third of potato chips is fat. They write it on the label, actually, and they correctly write it. Uh, this is out of 100 grams, uh, about 58% is carbohydrates. What they don't write is how much is trans fats, or they write that they don't write it correctly. And we will get back, I'll get back to you on that. So the least trans fat we found was in Bingo Oe Pudina, which was 0.6 grams. And the highest was in March 2012 batch of Lay's American style cream and onion which was 3.7 grams. So you have a range on trans fats in potato chips. What about salt? No one writes how much salt the food contains. So least was in lay, Lay's and the highest was in Uncle Chips. That's what we found. They were correct on total fats and carbs. They didn't give salt, they were wrong on trans fats. There was a mislabeling and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. But what these numbers mean? Essentially, these numbers are that if you take a standard packet of these potato chips and if you eat it, you finish about half of your daily fat. It contains 33 gram fat. 
and every day you are allowed 60 grams. So you finish a pack and then for the rest of the meal you only have to get 30 grams of fat is available for you. If you eat more of fat, you become more fat. That's the story. So this is about potato chips. Also, if you lays, for example, at 3.5 grams, uh, 3.7 grams of, of trans fat, our, our budget for trans fat is only about 2.5 grams. So if you munch a packet of lays, for that day, you have exceeded your trans fat budget. That's what potato chips is all about. Also, they are very salty. So you exhaust about 60 to 70 percent of your salt. After eating a pack of any one of these, you are really left with very little salt, very little fat from the rest of your diet. Let's look at Indian snacks. As I said, we tested kurkure masala munch and uh, haldiram's aloo bhujia. Again, they were correct on what they wrote about total fat and carbs. They were wrong about what they wrote about trans fats. Which is more dangerous. Which is more dangerous. <coughs> and they didn't write how much salt they contain. So for example, kurkure had 0.7 grams of trans fat and haldiram alu bhujia had 2.5 grams of trans fats. Again, haldiram alu bhujia had 3.3 grams of salt and kurkure had half about 1.6 grams. Basically, if you eat alu bhujia and too much of alu bhujia, you will get a heavy dose of salt and trans fat. And if you eat a full pack of kurkure, which is a little tedha, you exhaust one third of your calorie quota. So that's about Indian snacks. Coke and Pepsi, they write how much salt they contain. They say that we have about 30 grams of salt, uh, uh, about uh, 11 grams of salt in 100 ml. Uh, sorry, sugar in 100 ml. Now, uh, we tested, we found a little higher. Essentially, our, our added sugar diet is 20 to 25 grams per day. So if you take a 330 ml or 300 ml of bottle of soft drink, you actually exhaust in one bottle your entire added sugar uh, 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 quota. Then you can't have tea, you can't have anything else after that. Let's look at instant noodles. We tested Maggi Masala. And we also tested top ramen uh, noodles. Again, they were right as far as fat and carbs were concerned. And this, this we found repeatedly in all the samples. More or less, they wrote correctly how much fat they had and how much carbohydrate they had. They wrong. They put wrong information about salt and they put wrong information about trans fat. Both of them very dangerous. So you had Maggie had 0.6 gram of trans fat. It didn't write anything. Top ramen had 0.7 gram trans fat, it said zero trans fat. So we'll, I'll get back to that issue later. Again, similarly for salt, they both had very high quantity of salt. So if you take one packet of these noodles, and people do eat, some of us do eat every evening, you actually finish your salt quota for the day with one Maggi uh, packet. Then don't think about adding salt anywhere else, whether in vegetable or, or dal or, or, or or in any egg that you want to eat. Burgers, uh, we tested six of them. Uh, we found them to be highly salty, a uh, lot of empty calories. In fact, a lot of calories came from refined carbohydrates. Non-veg were very high on fats. In fact, 40 to 45 percent of energy in non-veg burgers came from fat, uh, whereas in veg burgers, about 55 percent came from refined carbohydrates. So you have this food which is highly salty, non-veg is fatty and very high on empty, cal uh, empty calories. That's what burgers are all about. But we never eat burger alone. We eat it with fries and with soft drink. I'll get back to that again. Look at fries. We tested three fries. Uh, they had probably the maximum amount of trans fats. And if you take a medium fries, 150 gram, which is very small, uh, you exceed your daily safe limit for trans fat. As simple as that. So that was, uh, and this value is not available. So if you look at burger and if you look at fries or if you look at pizza, you have to go to their website to find what is the nutritional claim they are making. They are not on the packet. At least pre-packaged food uh, uh, from bhujia to uh, uh, chips do write on their uh, package. Pizza, uh, we tested uh, actually only veg pizza. Uh, I, I don't 
remember why I said that, <laughs> but only veg, uh, and only the basic version. Uh, we found them to be low on fat, salt, and trans fat, but very high on refined carbs, again, very lot of empty calories. Uh, that's uh, pizza all about. But as I said, oh no, last most important KFC uh, fried chicken. If you eat two pieces, which is about 250 grams, you again exceed your trans fat and total fat, both of them. Very, very heavy fatty food, uh, this is. But, the, but we don't eat it alone. That's the story. The story is we eat it in combo. So this is the combo of KFC, which has a chicken burger, which has a piece of chicken, which has a fries, and a 300 ml soft drink. Now, what does this combo mean? If you eat this combo, about 60% of your total calorie is gone. So for the rest of the day, you only in breakfast, in, in, in evening brunch or in dinner, uh, you can have only 40% of your calories. This one meal will take away 60% of your calories. This one meal will take away all your fats because it has 64 grams of fats. It will take away your entire trans fat. You can't have any trans fat. As well as 70% of your salt. 60 to 70% of your salt. So that's what... And sugar is gone. And sugar is gone as well because it has about 43 grams of sugar. So after eating this meal, you can't have sugar, salt, fat, worst kind of trans fat you can't have from anywhere else. And 60% of your calorie is gone, so rest is only 40%. And that you decide from where you want to eat. Boiled vegetables. Boiled vegetables probably. Okay. So that's what this combo meal is all about. We give our children this. This nice meal which also comes with a toy. Uh, it has a burger, it has a fry, it has a carbonated drink. Half of the kid energy intake is gone from this meal. His entire sugar intake is gone. Uh, his or her entire, uh, you know, about more than 50% of fat intake is gone. 50% of salt is gone. And more or less entire trans fat is gone. This is what McDonald's meal is all about. So what I have told you right now is that if we eat these food, and we generally eat these food as snack, as in between meals. But the fact is, if you eat these and eat your normal meal, you're likely to become fat. That's what, because these are high intensity, high energy, high fat, high salt, high sugar, empty calorie food with no nutrition. That's what, what is the reason of increasing obesity in this country, especially in urban India, catching up in rural India as well. Let's look at labeling, which is the most interesting part of this, this, this study. And let's look at the labeling for salt and trans fat. Two most important things. Now, smart, which is that we are uh, essentially uh, making a health claim and we have a celebrity endorsement to tell you that you can eat this chip because it is Please. snack and smart. So, this is. Uh, and well, uh, anyway, that's his problem. <laughs> anyway, so they say that 14 gram is the serving size for Lay's. It is written there. It's not that they have not written it. But let's look at what is 14 grams. That's a little more than that. <laughs> it's 12.7 grams. It's 14.67, so I've given them 0.67 grams more. Okay, this is the serving size. So this is what is the, if you want to remain healthy, don't eat more than this of lace. That's what they claim on the label. And if this has less than 0.2 grams, they can write trans fat free. They don't have to, this zero comes automatically, okay? Because under our labeling rules, if you are for serving size, if you are less than 0.2, you can claim it to be trans fat. So you can write anything you want as far as serving size is concerned. I'm 100% sure that most of, eat, most of us, when we eat, we eat more than this. Okay, so this is the serving size for lace. 
So Lays, when it claims, it twists our law, when it claims zero gram trans fat in 14 gram serving, it is correct as per Indian law. It can make that claim because the law allows it to write 14 gram serving, which none of us actually follow. Okay? But when it says that it has zero grams of trans fat in 100 gram, it is misbranding. Because our study finds that it has 0.9 grams in 100 grams. So one gram almost. Almost a gram. Which is half your daily quota of trans fat. Okay. This is the most interesting one. Aru Bhujia. Look at their serving size. Their serving size is 10 grams. So, just we'll tell you what is 10 gram serving size. And it says I have less than 0.2 gram of trans fat in the serving size, which is almost a borderline because we found 2.25 grams. So, it's a borderline case. This is what is the serving size for Alu Bhujia. You should pick it up and show them because this is very interesting. Okay. So you write what you want this to write. This is the serving size. Okay. And based on this, if it has less than 0.2 grams of uh, trans, fat. trans fat, they can say it's zero trans fat. It was almost a borderline because we find we found 0.25, but the serving size was a super joke. Okay. We all laughed actually here. Yeah. And they were absolutely wrong when they said zero gram trans fat in 100 gram because we found 2.5 grams here. Top ramen, you know, they, miss, they, they even violated the absurd Indian law because they said zero trans fat, but in 80 grams that we tested, they had 0.7 grams. Now, so what, what we have showed you is serving size is allowing these companies to put whatever they want as serving size, Thank claim you. zero trans fats, and then sell it. But what about burger pizzas? They, they don't write anything. You have to go to their website. And what we found most interesting was a huge double standard. This is McDonald's India nutritional information on their website. They will tell you energy, protein, total fat, carbohydrate, sodium, which is salt, and what is the serve size. That's it. <laughs> Let's look at McDonald's US website. They start by saying, we provide a nutritional analysis of menu item to help you balance your McDonald's meal with other food you eat. That's their first claim. Our goal is to provide you with information you need to make sensible decisions about balance, variety, and moderation in your diet. That's their first claim. And then they give you serving size, calories, total fat, trans fat, and also tell you what their food is as percentage of daily value, which I have been talking about my analysis. So they actually tell you, if you eat this burger, what percent of, percentage of your fat is gone. So they will give you that. They will give you everything as percentage of daily value. So then you can decide that if I have this burger, what percentage of fat is gone, what percentage of salt is gone. Nothing like this on Indian website. That's McDonald's. We found the same thing. This is our KFC India. They don't have it. They, they give you in graphics. So they will tell you this chicken piece, leg piece, or whatever piece has protein, energy, carbohydrate, total fat, that's it. This is what is US nutritional guide of KFC, again the same thing. They will give you trans fat, saturated fat, everything. So we found huge double standard. First, information is not easily available. And secondly, whatever is available is not enough to make decision. And they provide everything in the US, they don't do it in India because you don't our regulators are not asking for it. Now the most interesting part, and I think Sunita is very happy to tell you about this. So I'll hand it over to her. No, please do. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Don't break that. I think this is about how companies first advertise for good food, and then, you know, they surreptitiously remove those ingredients from their food, but don't inform the public. As I said, we tested two Lay's 
one two late batches one was in december 2011 another was march 2011 first of all lays went through a massive effort we, we tested one which was manufactured in december 2011 and one in march 2012 and 12, sorry okay. march 2012 huh. now the story is lays first went through a massive advertisement campaign on this something called as snack smart which has saab ali khan and the logical and they said it's snack smart it has zero trans fat and it is cooked in healthy food and it has mufa pufa and all that everything stuff, right? okay the, this is the pack of december 2011 december 2011 is the same pack that we showed you earlier in terms of exceeding yeah. the trans fat okay now the other is the same pack when we tested in march 2011 12 everything was same the snack smart was gone at the top end if you see this portion changed everything remained same let me just tell you this was their claim snack smart trans fat zero cooked in healthy oil and then here they had mufa pufa trans fat everything in march 2012 this this was gone this portion remained the same only fat remained mufa pufa trans fat everything was gone in december 2011 they said zero trans fat we actually found 0.9 in march 2012 they made no claims on trans fat we found 3.7 so but they did inform the consumer and this part actually remains the same urgent action is required there is already a uh, high court case on junk food food safety and standards authority has to respond to this case i think banning advertisement one removing junk food from school imposing fat tax which is being done by number of countries uh uh and working to regulate food business to contain salt sugar and fat is urgent action which is required we are beginning to become fat it will become a major epidemic if we don't act now that's the end of the presentation okay thank, thank you, you.